Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Uh, what you're looking at right now, just remember there's always a video on YouTube that corresponds with these podcasts, um, podcast uh, episodes. Um, what you're looking at is the current strategy. You can tell by the name here that this is the third iteration of it after the second, or so this is like the fourth or fifth version. Um, I'm going to just walk you around on what's needed to run this strategy because lots of people have been asking questions. First, you need Redis. Um, I've talked about this in the past where this strategy using Duca's copy, JForex, connects into um, Redis, no SQL, as well as I'm just using the, um, the Redis client as well. So the Redis server is always running. So before I run this strategy, I need to... I need to um, ensure that the Redis server is running because the uh, strategy in the Java code will immediately connect into this. If it's not running, it stops the strategy and doesn't run. Um, and uh, that's the need of Redis. And I've talked about it numerous times, my backstore, it's now uh, my message queuing. On top of that, what I love about Redis is uh, I had problems trying to keep on top of all these multiple multi-dimensional arrays in, in this strategy here in this Java file it was just a pure pain in the ass to work with it just kept uh, the multi-threading just kept overwhelming the JForex platform and as a result I decided um, to try out the Redis I'm glad I've done it it's totally cleaned up and offloaded all the killing all the processes getting killed uh, and, and the threading in this strategy so that was a price of all benefits. That was the biggest one. All right. So <clears throat> what I also have is we are, we've got tons and tons and tons of messages that the bugging process in this life cycle of this strategy is just a real pain in the ass. So I have to um, do a lot of logging to see what the thing's doing. Cause there's no way, I mean, you can kind of do it in an IDE, but, um, I might actually switch it over to NetBeans, um, uh, as I've shown before, but right now this is the way I do it, and it kind of works. And um, so far, it's okay. I won't say it's great. It's a struggle, um, but we are testing. I am testing it in a variety of different ways. I just want to also show you, this is the bid <coughs> ask volume. This is a new version or a new update in the j Forex. You can see the book as is being traded on all the um, exchanges. So let's say I'm gonna go over to a less, vol um, but you can see all the different volume uh, currently in uh, Duca's copy. And I'm not sure if this, this is a demo account, but I'm not sure if this is live and real. Um, but obviously if you have a dollar live account, it'll be a totally different um, scenario. So going back to the strategy, as I said, we're using Redis. So the front end with Redis is I've got this program called RDM. Um, you can probably do a search on it. Now I've also looked for any of the later options for Redis. Uh, as you know, I'm on a Mac, um, so this does work quite nicely. And what I've got here, <clears throat> I'm show you the database now, is the database for NoSQL is a little different. We have a key. Um, and a value within the key because this is a key store and then we also have the hash which is this right here so what I'm planning to do is I'm not sure I'm gonna break it out when I start moving into other um, cryptocurrency for instance or even further options futures and all that stuff and do I have different instances running for my Redis databases um, or am I gonna put them all on one system one cluster i'm not sure how i'm going to architect that yet but because this redis is, is open source i have that ability and not have to worry about licensing and such so right now what we have is we have this fx position is open or was open and um this is the currency pair of the us dollar and the swiss krone and it's it's in a buy situation so right now is um we have our key which is a unique timestamp. Now, I've coded up the strategy in a way where just during my testing, it's only going to allow one position per currency pair just because it can get pretty hairy 
if I don't do that as part of the debugging process, and I'm actually thinking that may be a better methodology, but on the other hand, I've seen instances where currency pairs will suddenly new positions can start um, uh, opening up as separate orders. Um, so I'm still in experimental mode with that. And this logic will be also easily tra transportable into any other um, uh, asset class. But because Forex is a very fast moving asset class, um, this probably the same trading logic can be and will be applied into, um, into uh, crypto as well, which will be my next big venture. Okay, so let's start looking. So we have a key. And as I said, this is the pair, but this is a unique, um, basically the, the trading stamp or the timestamp. And then here, what we have here is um, a variety of things. So the 001, 001 is the quantity that I'm buying. The, uh, this is the ATR. This is a true, meaning if it's a long or a short. And then this right here, uh, the 117, which will change hopefully, uh, are the number of bars uh, that I'm tracking. Uh, so I have 129 bars open uh, since I've opened the position. <clears throat> Here in this particular one, um, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but I do have instances where um, the position opens up and then it closes uh, and there's really no bars, so I still got to figure that out. But this one may be a classic uh, environment for um, the positions. So... These are definitely um, worthy, I think, but we'll see if they make money or not. Now, I've said in past videos is that the longer you hold these type of positions open, the higher likely you'll make profit. Um, so instead of like closing these out after a few minutes, um, if you let them run for a while, um, and I've seen, by, this is by accident, strategies run for like eight, nine, 10, 12 hours, and the profit that I'm seeing on these can be huge um, so that's what I'm hoping here and then set the conditions on when to close out those positions so here I have to um, look at see what, what what's happening here but then again if I go into my J Forex and look at the reports so let's say we know that um, now remember I've been running this for a while last night today so I have to use the last time I've been running it so I've launched this uh, strategy at around 1700 let's say and again that's 1700 Swiss time from where I'm located so if I go into the reports and look at let's say the position report um, what will happen is now again you'll see these demo accounts and like I care that that's gonna go very far um, so this is the current position um, this was the one that closed pretty fast these are the kind of positions I'm not a very big fan of these small scalping like kind of positions they're just you're not gonna make any money with them I mean if you do it by volume maybe but even still the commissions alone are just not worth um, pursuing I think now let's check out the J Forex and see what we got currently open so we have one position that's open the US Swiss uh, Swedish kroner so it's a long it is losing as you can see here but not much um, and this this you'll see a lot of um, and what will happen is that position may come back and actually start making money but just if, if you have a position that is going into the money uh, and, and you hang on to it and you have a lot of trading logic that will cut the trade uh, as it starts to um, come off of the, the profitable run using classic ATR, let's say, um, and there's some other techniques. I've been provided some really interesting algos that I'm testing out to do that. Um, and it, it, it seems to work, but it's just looking for those scenarios when to put on the positions. So the closing out is the key um, right now. So this is where things are at. Now, as part of my trading, um, I will say a few things. Today is December. 20th, I think the volume is a lot lighter than it should be as we come close to Christmas season. Um, so there's that factor. And the other thing is because this broker, I would say the volume is fairly light. That's why there's not a lot of um, 
position, more positions opening up as they, I think they should be. The problem is, is that um, currently uh, I'm just waiting for a profitable run. So if I look at one of these charts for the uh, US dollar, Swiss kroner here, let's see what we have. So right now, um, you can see, uh, looks like some of my indicators are not um, hooked up to be with this chart here. Okay, so so this chart we've we've talked about these different indicators, moving at the simple moving averages, as well. In the, in the blue, you'll see the actual price line, and these are the min max. So if I'm hoping that this translates into the yeah. So here we are. So here's some of the positions that were put on. Um, so let me just blow this puppy up. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we are looking for positions right here. Uh, there's one order put on at 1710. Uh, there's been no positions here. So this right here has been the problem because it dipped here because it saw the two moving averages somewhat cross and it did move up. Now it's starting to uh, look like it is coming back off. It did make a bit of money. It is coming off and it's starting to lose. And that's what I think you're, why you're seeing um, this scenario here, why this is starting to lose a little bit. So, <clears throat> this is, um, to be honest, this is the difficulty of um, of uh, the trading in the automated world. You're gonna have this regardless of whatever asset class or or, or mixed uh, uh, mixed um, instrument. It doesn't matter really. So if I go back to my this is our current open. So see here, here's our position here that was open, and now it's starting to lose money. So Theoretically, it may have made a little bit of money here, uh, here, and then close it out, and hopefully it will close the position to prevent loss. But it's just it's just bouncing around here, um, and uh, who knows if it's going to break up or not. And, th and that's what you're looking for because um, the scenario was it is supposed to use both the SMA cross between the fast and moving. As well as the, um, the the max to make sure it is uh, to a point where there is a, a potential of a breakout. So we'll see where this goes. Um, but again, this isn't this is this isn't a proper entry because I've taken out the logic of an actual real um, simulated uh, entry because of just for testing purposes. So this is not a proper entry in what my strategy would typically do. But this is just to automate to expedite the testing of this strategy. But obviously, this looks like it's not a good, a good, a good entry. But we're just trying to test the automation of the exit, uh, and that's why you'll see more um, losses as you can see here. Um, so there are more losses from last night. Um, not seeing any any shorts at all. It's just all long for some reason. Now, I want to say this. Um, I've been testing this pretty good for a long time now. And what I'm finding is uh, I'm Eastern Standard Time in North America. You will see the occasional uh, trading opportunity of like US and Canadian dollar come about. I've seen a number of those um, towards uh, 10, 11 a, uh, p.m., which is in conjunction with um, Asia, specifically Hong Kong. I do see a lot of opportunities that come about at around 11 p.m. for U.S. dollar in Hong Kong, which would make sense, maybe for the closing. Or no, sorry, that would be for the open, actually. And then around midnight to 2 a.m., we get lots of opportunities in a lot of the European currencies and I do believe that is because of uh, Dukas copy most of the traders are uh, in Dukas copy are trading out of Europe so there's a lot of activity with 
um, euro, anything, and any other standalone European currency, and that will go till about mm, 7, 8 a.m. my time, and then it dies off. And then during my time that I'm awake, New York trading hours, there's very little volume. And um, to be honest, it's even worse. As I said, we get closer to uh, Christmas. So I just wanted to show this to you. Um, but it's kind of um, uh, not a, I mean, that's doesn't sound like a lot of money losing, but it would be. But this is not a proper, uh, proper entry. So I just want to show you what's going on. I want to show you the intricacies of all the different um, tools that I'm using and how this, this overall strategy is being um, uh, being uh, how it's evolving so we've got the redis as well and uh, the database um, so if I just do a uh, let me see yeah so it's 201 bars uh, that have passed since the opening of that position this one I'm not sure what's going on but you know what I'm probably gonna run it in a real environment and see what I'm gonna clean it up and see what happens and report back on that okay wish me luck